In nature, all living things are part of their environment, and the environment affects the survival and well-being of its inhabitants. In many situations, the environment can be controlled to provide a maximum benefit for a specific population. In the hospital, the operating room environment is one that must be controlled. It's designed to ensure maximum benefits and safety for every surgical patient. The concepts and principles of aseptic technique are used in creating and maintaining that environment. An effective method of controlling infection in the operating room is through the use of aseptic technique. Aseptic techniques are the methods used to maintain asepsis. Asepsis is the absence of disease-causing microorganisms. Surgical aseptic technique is creating and maintaining a controlled environment free of bacteria, viruses, and fungi. This is also called sterile technique. Sterile means being maximally free of all microorganisms. Sterile field is the area and people immediately around a patient that have been prepared for a sterile procedure. Microorganisms can come from two main sources, endogenous sources and exogenous sources. Endogenous microorganisms are normally found within the body. These may cause infections when the patient's own body defenses are low. Factors that increase patient susceptibility to endogenous infections include malnutrition, age, obesity, chronic disease, and impaired defense mechanisms. The nurse can help defend the patient against microorganism invasion by using aseptic techniques in preparing the skin, inserting a catheter or monitoring device, or starting IVs. Patients can also be infected with exogenous microorganisms that are outside his or her body. Safeguarding the patient from hospital-acquired exogenous microorganism infection can be accomplished in many ways. Controlling traffic in the surgical suite is one way. Traffic patterns for specific areas are defined in AORN standards and recommended practices. Unrestricted areas where street clothes can be worn include control points where the suite interfaces with the rest of the facility. Semi-restricted areas are the peripheral support areas within the OR suite. These include, but are not limited to, storage, work areas, and corridors. Here, scrub attire and caps are worn. The restricted area requires full operating room attire, including masks. These areas include the clean core, substerile areas, and operating rooms. Another environmental factor is the control of air currents. Effective air ventilation and filtration, unidirectional air currents, and laminar flow rooms decrease airborne contamination. While air turbulence created by opening doors, fanning of linen, excessive numbers of people in the OR, incorrectly worn face masks, and excessive talking may all increase microbial numbers. Environmental sanitation is also a factor in preventing transmission of exogenous microorganisms. Germicidal cleaning solutions used in environmental sanitation destroy microorganisms. Germicidal chemicals that kill most viruses, bacilli, and fungi are called disinfectants. They are used on inanimate objects. There are three main methods used in cleaning the OR. Concurrent cleaning is the ongoing cleaning immediately after the discharge of infectious material. 
End of case cleaning is performed between surgical cases. Terminal cleaning can be done following the final procedure of the day. All of these factors are important in controlling the operating room environment. However, people are the major source of contamination. The primary factor in controlling exogenous microorganisms is adequate washing of hands before any patient intervention using antimicrobial solutions. The surgical team is responsible for isolating microorganisms by their practice of aseptic technique. The foundation upon which aseptic technique is built lies in the surgical conscience of every person in the OR. Surgical conscience is knowing and adhering to the principles of asepsis and sterile technique at all times. Each person's behavior and actions are guided by their internal beliefs and attitudes. Therefore, when one has a surgical conscience, performance of aseptic technique is consistent whether the person is alone or observed. The person with a good surgical conscience must also have self-discipline, good anticipatory skills, and the maturity to perform correctly in every situation. Knowledge of concepts and principles of aseptic technique is essential for controlling the operating room environment. There are eight principles of aseptic or sterile technique. Principle number one. All items used within a sterile field must be sterile. There are many ways to kill microorganisms to provide sterile instruments or supplies. Sterilizing agents include steam, ethylene oxide gas, liquid chemicals, dry heat, and radiation. Sterile items are kept in closed storage located in appropriate areas. These instruments and supplies may be packaged in a variety of materials, which can be reusable textiles, non-woven fabric, plastic, or hard containers. Packaging material must allow sterilizing agents to penetrate its contents while providing a barrier to environmental microorganisms. The length of effectiveness of package sterility, also called shelf life, is event, not time, related. Storage area conditions, methods of handling, and type of packaging are some variables which determine the length of effectiveness. Each sterile package must be inspected for integrity before being opened to ensure that its contents have not been compromised by holes, punctures, rips, or moisture. To comply with external regulations, an expiration date is marked on all internally processed materials. Some commercially packaged materials may be marked with either a date of manufacture or sterilization expiration. Sterility process monitors indicate a package has been exposed to the sterilization process. Monitors can be inside or outside of the package and can be discs, tablets, solutions in small containers, or chemical tape. Always check the following before opening a sterile package. The integrity of the package. The expiration date. And the sterility process monitors. Principle number two. A sterile barrier that has been permeated must be considered contaminated. 
Sterility can be compromised if permeable materials are used. When moisture soaks through a package, it's called strike-through. Any article that has become wet is considered contaminated. Even if strike-through cannot be directly observed, Many of today's materials are fluid resistant and antimicrobial, but may be punctured or torn. If a sterile barrier is mechanically disrupted, for example, a needle puncturing a glove, a surgical conscience will demand the situation is acknowledged and corrected. Hard container systems should have intact filters. Principle number three, the edges of a sterile container are considered unsterile once the package is opened. These boundaries are hypothetical and are safety margins. The boundaries should be maintained in an aseptic environment to prevent accidental contamination of a sterile field. In opening large packs, the cover becomes the barrier to create the sterile field. With some commercial packs, place your hand under the fold of the material. Open the back and then the front flap. Each side flap should then be opened. Care should be taken to walk around the pack and not reach over the sterile field. When opening small packages, open the far side first and the near side last. Secure the wrapper tails so they will not spring back and contaminate the sterile item. Extend the contents toward the sterile person so he or she can lift it away from the package cleanly without touching the wrapper sides. In opening peel packs, Separate the edges by rolling them back over your hands. The sterile contents can then be offered to the scrub person in a way that minimizes the possibility of touching the unsterile edges. When opening solutions, remove the lid by lifting it straight off. This prevents accidentally contaminating the edges. Pour the solution carefully to prevent splashing or touching the sterile field. Do not allow solutions to run down the bottle and drip onto the sterile field. Once opened, all the solution must be dispensed in a single delivery. Any unused portion must be discarded. Principle number four. Gowns are considered sterile in front from shoulder level to table level and the sleeves to two inches above the elbows. Gowns are considered sterile until they're put on. Once hands touch the stockinette cuffs, the cuffs are considered unsterile and all must be covered with sterile gloves. Sterile persons should keep their hands close to their body in front of them and only within the designated sterile area of the gown. The back of a wraparound gown is considered unsterile because it cannot be constantly observed. Principle number five. Tables are sterile only at table level. Drapes that hang over the sides are considered unsterile because they're out of sight and cannot be monitored. Scrubbed persons should not allow their hands to fall below the sterile field for the same reason. A scrubbed person should sit in a sterile area only to perform a surgical procedure and should remain seated for the entire procedure. Principle number six. Sterile persons and items touch only sterile areas. Unsterile persons or items touch only unsterile areas. Unscrubbed persons must be careful to maintain enough distance from a sterile field to prevent contamination. 
unsterile people should always face the sterile field and should not walk between two sterile fields. Unsterile persons should not lean or reach over sterile areas and should always maintain a distance of safety to prevent accidental contamination. A safety margin must be maintained either by space or by using an instrument for extension. Principle number seven, movement within or around a sterile field must not contaminate that field. Sterile persons must remain within the sterile field. When exchanging positions, movement must be back to back, or front to front. Principle number eight, all items and areas of doubtful sterility are considered contaminated. An item is either sterile or it is not. Any questionable item is considered unsterile. A good surgical conscience is vital in maintaining a sterile field. Sterile fields should be prepared as near as possible to the start time of the surgical procedure. A sterile field must be constantly monitored. Unguarded fields should be considered contaminated. It is the responsibility of all members of the surgical team to maintain a sterile field. Operating room personnel must acquire the knowledge and develop skills needed to control their environment. They also need to have the surgical conscience to continuously apply these basic concepts and principles. Principle number one. All items used within a sterile field must be sterile. Principle number two. A sterile barrier that has been permeated must be considered contaminated. Principle number three. The edges of a sterile container are considered unsterile once the package is opened. Principle number four. Gowns are considered sterile in front from shoulder level to table level and the sleeves to two inches above the elbows. Principle number five. Tables are sterile only at table level. Principle number six. Sterile persons and items touch only sterile areas. Unsterile persons or items touch only unsterile areas. Principle number seven. Movement within or around a sterile field must not contaminate that field. Principle number eight. All items and areas of doubtful sterility are considered contaminated. Responsible actions and awareness of aseptic techniques by hospital personnel will give the patient a better chance toward remaining infection-free from the surgical intervention.